December 2016. This is Sylvia Shremurthy and you're listening to the newspaper reviews on www.advanenj.com. Let's now look at the paper highlights from today's newspapers. The top highlight in Sunday Times says, Government considers bringing EPF ETF under Treasury. With the objective of introducing a pension scheme for private sector employees, the government is considering a proposal to bring the Employees Provident Fund and Employees Trust Fund under the Treasury, a cabinet minister said. Labor Minister W. D. J. Seneviratna told the Sunday Times the proposal to formulate a private sector pension scheme was under discussion after bringing the EPF and ETF under the Treasury. He said the proposal was to have a contributory pension scheme similar to what has been proposed for public sector employees. A fund would be set up to support the pension scheme while part of the funds will be made available as housing loans for EPF ETF contributors, the minister explained. But the amount given as housing loans would be cut down from the current 75% to 30% because the government wanted to ensure that the employees received a sufficient amount after retirement. The highlight in the middle says, Central Expressway, Chinese firm likely to get stage 4. The Highways Ministry is seeking approval to hand over the construction of Stage 4 of the Central Expressway between Kurunagala and Damula to a Chinese firm. The funding for the project will come as a loan from the China Exim Bank and the project is due to be completed within three and a half years. The expressway spanning 68.7 kilometers is to cost 2.5 billion rupees per kilometer. Highways Minister Lakshman Kiriala said the project would begin next year and once completed, along with the rest of the Central Expressway project, the travel time within Colombo and Damulla would be only around 90 minutes. The project will be useful for the tourism industry and the transport of vegetables to Colombo, he said. The rest of the Expressway project is being carried out in three stages. Stage 1. From Karnavata to Mirigama. Stage 2 from Mirigama to Kurnagala and Stage 3 from Putahera to Galagedara. And the highlight at the bottom says, CE Third Stage, bids being evaluated before approval of EIA report. The Highways Ministry is evaluating two bids for the third section of the Central Expressway even before the mandatory environmental impact assessment for the project is approved by the Central Environmental Authority. Two Japanese companies have made offers and these are under consideration while 90% of people whose lands are being taken over for the project have been issued with notices under Section 38 of the Land Acquisition Act. These are the orders for taking possession of a land. The EIA was carried out for the Road Development Authority by the Sri Jayavardhanapura University's Department of Forestry and Environmental Science. As required by law, the CEA has now opened it out for public comment. Let's now move to the paper highlights in Sunday Observer. The main highlight says, Traffic Fines Under Review, President Appoints Six-Member Committee. President Maitrapana Sirsena has appointed a six-member committee to look into revision of traffic fines and the issues faced by private bus operators bringing the strike by several transport unions against the new traffic fine to an end. Following the meeting with several representatives of private bus unions at the President's official residence yesterday, President Sirisena appointed the committee which will meet the private bus operators tomorrow according to a release issued by the President's media division. The committee comprises Secretary to the Ministry of Transport Nihal Somavira, Secretary to the Ministry of Finance Dr. R. H. S. Samaratunga, Senior DIG for Traffic, Administration and Road Safety Nandana Munasingha, along with a nominated senior official from the Attorney General's Department, Department of Motor Traffic and additional Secretary to the President. The highlight in the middle says, LG Elections. Old system if all parties agree, says Kiriala. Leader of the House and Higher Education and High Base Minister Lakshman Kiriala told Parliament yesterday that the forthcoming local government election could be held under old preferential voting system if all political parties give their consent for it. And the highlight at the bottom says, Special ID counter for OL students. 
the Department of Registration of Persons will open a special counter tomorrow to issue identity cards swiftly to students sitting for the GCE Ordinary Level Examination on Tuesday. Speaking to the Sunday Observer, the Commissioner General of the Department of Registration of Persons, Sarat Kumara Ratnayaka said that students need not come personally. And now, let's move to the paper highlights in Ceylon today. The top highlight says, Breakthrough in renewed Sino-Lanka relationship, Government to buy Chinese military aircraft. Another highlight says, PM to grill IGP and Sagala. The highlight in the middle says, Pakistan's role in socio-economic sphere, ISIS in Indian Ocean. Commander Pakistan Fleet Vice Admiral Said Arifullah Husseini, who was in Colombo to take part in Gold Dialogue, the International Maritime Conference, spoke to Ceylon today on the possibility of ISIS activity spilling into the Indian Ocean and Sri Lanka-Pakistan relations after the change in administration in 2015. And the highlight at the bottom says, Referendum on a constitutional amendment would be dicey, says Ganesan. Hence, winning it would be imperative. Minister of National Coexistence and Official Languages, Manu Ganeshan warns that the referendum on a constitutional amendment cannot be won easily. That's all for today's newspaper highlights and we'll get back to you with more news tomorrow. Thank you.